Sitting here in the vineyards in Hawke's Bay with Dave. Dave, you're a <laughs> winemaker at um, Black Barn. Yes. It's not a name that uh, many people recognize. Why, why is that? Uh, probably because we don't export and yeah. most of the wine is sold on site here. So even within New Zealand, you know, like it's, yeah, 60% of what we produce is sold on site. Yeah. Um, and or restaurants, so it doesn't go into supermarkets and um, yeah. yeah, probably doesn't so, get so outside of the region. How, how big is the, the, your property or your estate? So, um, so it would be sort of pick somewhere between 70 to 100 tonnes, so probably 5,000 to 7,000 cases. Cases, which yep. are so about 60,000 bottles yep. or something like yep. that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and that would be medium size, small size. In the uh, it's small. Yeah, yeah small. small. Anything yeah. under, you know, anything under that sort of hundred ton is, yeah, what you kind of term, you know, small boutique premium, yeah. I suppose, would be. Yeah. And you're making life very difficult for you by having all <laughs> sorts of. You know, I think you have twelve different, or fourteen. Uh, different fourteen, different? yeah, fourteen different varieties, and it's split over eight, twenty-eight sub blocks on seven different sites yeah. that are probably within a eight-kilometer radius. Yeah. Yeah. Has so. it just happened or did you want it to be like that? Um, well, it kind of organic, well, it, it organically grew from being on a very defined area. So we're in the tomato special character zone or what yeah. was known as the Havelock Hills. Yeah. So north facing slopes, the clay based, very old soils and sort of a hundred years ago that that's for Hawke's Bay where a lot of the original vineyards would have been planted because, you know, they were frost free, didn't require irrigation. Um, yeah, and so, and some of the blocks that we, the original plantings were actually one vineyard that was first established in 1948, yeah. that was replanted in 1994 along with um, three other sites here, and then um, over a period of time I started with Black Barn in 2001, in 2000 they planted a, another vineyard which was Merlot down the, you know, sort yeah. of three or, two or three kilometres away. And then we moved over into the Tuki Tuki Valley, so those were more um, white aromatic varieties, so Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, um, and uh, through connections in the wine industry, we've also got a couple of lease blocks that um, uh, we've got one which is on some river terraces um, with Tempranillo, Montepulciano, Syrah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, they kind of, it's just organically grown, I think, being in that particular area. Tomato Special Character Zone, there's four wineries. Um, who source fruit, and three of them, are, well, yeah, th two of them, in fact, are less than 100 tonne. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we've got a very small, it's that, you know, on any world stage, it's a very small appellation. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, next year will be your 20th anniversary, then? It? Vintage here in Black Barn, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And 30 odd, 30 odd in Hawke's Bay, yeah. So, um, looking back over those 20, 30 years, mm. has things change much um yeah you know like i mean a lot of the you know like there was a an evolution where hawks bay the vine, a lot of the vineyards were planted tended to be in a time when the industry was producing a lot of bulk or bag in the box cask wines yeah. so and that was um you know there was a lot of mula or you know riesling sylvana um yeah. and less of the premium grape varieties um so a lot of it was bulk and there's been sort of an evolution that in the 90s, um, you know, some of the Villa Maria and um, the evolution of Church Road, um, you know, that kind of moved towards more premium varieties and the adoption of Syrah, the recognition that Syrah in the 1980s by Dr. Alan Limmer, um, you know, that Syrah had the potential to be um, what Sauvignon Blanc is for Marlborough and what Pinot Noir is for Central Otago, I think Syrah is mm. for Hawke's Bay. Mm. Um, and then better sites, you know, we kind of moved away from that country that was too heavy for, you know, it was great for producing bulk wines, back to, you know, those, um, I think there's that saying that, you know, the grapes should go where the plough can't, or, yeah. you know, grapes yeah. grow where the plough can't go. Yeah. So that sort of bonier country, which is um, a struggling vine, makes good wine. So that change of 
vineyards been replanted. Mm. So there's not a lot of old vineyards in Hawke's Bay, you know, like 20 to 30 years would be kind of like in the older. Um, but that's part of how this has grown. And also I think Hawke's Bay has grown along with that replanting of better varieties, better clones. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the quality level has gone up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and number of wineries has grown as well. Yeah, do you think, uh, thinking about the future for Hawke's Bay, do you think uh, there is a specific orientation that uh, would make sense for the, the, uh, the region? I mean, thinking, for instance, of the, uh, the fame of uh, Sauvignon Blanc on the South, South Island, uh, mm -hmm. Marlborough, or, or Pinot Noir in Central Otago. Yeah. Do, you, do you see a similar evolution for, for Hawke's Bay? Yeah. Or, or, or not? Yeah, I do. I think, you know, like these, we, we have producers now that, you know, are at the top end of the market for Syrah and um, Cabernet based, you know, like, I mean, we've got Villa Maria with, um, I mean, they produced an absolutely amazing. 2013 Cabernet off the Narkirikiri gravels. Mm. Um, Church Road have their top tier Tom, which is a tribute to Tom McDonald, the, what yeah. you'd call the yeah. father of red wine in Hawke's Bay. You know, and that's a you know, $200 plus bottle yeah. of wine. So there's that. That, I think, of being a small enough, I mean, on a global scale, the wine, the wine region is small, and even though we're on the kind of you know, on the east coast of a small or a very large island in the South Pacific, yeah. um, you know, we shouldn't be scared of some of the wines that yeah. we make stand very, very well against, you know, like producers in Bordeaux and mm. Burgundy and, um, yeah. So, so getting back to, to Black Barn wines, yeah. you have you have so many different wines with, yeah. with all the different wines, but is there anything, uh, is there any specific, style or characteristic that you think you, you're trying to get through in, uh, in all your wines? Um, the philosophy is balance. Yeah. Balance and seamless palate texture, you know, so that, that a wine not having any elbows, that is an expression of its vineyard. So, you know, like less about me and more about, you know, like how those varieties are expressed off the heavier soils, because um, I think they give the wine weight and texture. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing about wine is, is that balance, you know, yeah. so that that seamlessness and ripeness or fleshiness of the tannins, uh, purity of fruit flavours. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I think, you know, the evolution and, and how, you know, see the wines going forward. And, well, right. we tasted it right, right now mm. before sitting mm. down here in the, in the vineyards. We tasted mm. uh, uh, your wine, which is called Conchetta. Yep which is a, a very unusual blend with uh, Sangiovese and yeah, Montepulciano Mont and Sangiovese. And to yeah. me, that was very elegant and very uh, subtle. It was not at all a powerhouse in mm. any way, which you, you can get with those uh, yep. varieties, if it, well, yep. depending on the climate. Now, we haven't, I assume you're also making uh, Syrah and uh, Cabernet. Yeah, and I... Maybe yeah. we'll taste it all yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've had a couple of, you know, like, I mean, for us, for us Syrah is more of that sort of lighter, lighter style, more aromatic. So yeah, yeah. I quite often refer to our Syrah as more like double shot Pinot Noir, really. Okay. Um, and we've got a fabulous block of Cabernet Franc. I mean, we've produced several single vineyard, single vintage Cabernet Francs. It was a 2013, was the champion other red variety at our local Hawke's Bay AMP it's show. really exciting variety. Yeah, and I think Cabernet Franc is under, underrated. And, yeah. it, and that sort of, yeah, I think that wine will be around for a lot longer than what I am, to be honest. But, you know, it's, yeah, but they kind of once, I think that's that thing of having, you know, maybe four or five vintages, which were absolutely amazing in, the, in, the, in that time that you are involved in the wine industry. And I think we've had a couple of those. Yeah. So if someone wants to uh, get to know the winery a, li a little bit better, what, what wines would you start to? Would you oh, I think our Chardonnay, you know, like, a, you know, I think our Chardonnay convinces people that, you know, like they do actually like Chardonnay. Yeah. Um, the uh yeah i mean we've got a sparkling that's fresh and aromatic and you know that sort of drink now celebration style yeah yeah um the merlot merlot cabernet um it's always merlot dominant that sort of lovely fineness of tannins um and we also just do a very small amount of riesling that i kind of you know because i just love riesling and, and again the same thing about balance <laughs> Yeah. So we, I know I'm disturbing yeah. you in the middle yeah. of the harvest. So just before I leave you, or you, you yeah. leave me and go yeah. out to, to continue your harvest, 
2020 harvest, how does it look for you? Um, it's looking really exciting. Um, you know, like we've started early, but the fruit is in pristine, amazing condition. Um, you know, and I think our older vine's been dry grown. They've managed to sort of get through. And we're well over, we're well approaching probably, you know, like a third, if not quite two fifths through the harvest. And at this stage, the fruit is just coming off fantastically. Well, I did bring some grapes along to the tasting, some yeah. Tempranillo and Cabernet Franc, you know, and the, the, they're just, you know, there is, the picking is very, very easy. You know, we're not having to select out any rots or anything. So um, it's going very well. So yeah, we can quite look exciting. Forward to some, can look forward really to nice yeah, two or three, yeah, yeah, some years time. couple of years' time, sort of some being a really exciting 2020. And I think for Hawke's Bay, as a rule, I think yeah. the 20 wines will be yeah. um, fantastic. Dave Blackburn, winemaker, thank you very much. Thank you very much.